Yes, turn off your phone. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to those at home who are uh, watching the first board meeting of Hingham Cares for the 2018-2019 school year. We're excited to be regrouping and reconnecting and um, going over some really um, interesting initiatives that we have for the upcoming year. We'll probably have some more people joining us. I hear some people in the hallway. Um, but in the interest of time, we will get started with the agenda. Um, so the first thing that we'd like to do, oh, hi, Rob. Hey, Tom, you guys want to sit over here? You'll have to share an agenda. So we're just getting started and just about to do introductions. So you came in at just the right moment. Um, we are unofficially a nonprofit, a 501c3, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, it's been a lengthy process, unfortunately. Um, but we do have established officers, we have board members, we've established an advisory board. Um, and so I'd just like to make some introductions. So I am Kristen Arute, I am the president of, of Hingham Cares. To my right is Laurie McCarthy, vice president. Pam Johnson is our treasurer. Um, we are still on the hunt for a secretary to take notes at our meetings. Um, and then our board members are Lynn Adams, who could not be here this evening. She's our school liaison. Marianne Blackmer is going to be um, working on some grant writing for us. Libby Claypool couldn't be here this evening, but she's um, doing some filings for us, and she's also on top of our nonprofit filing. Kurt Gerald is not here this evening, but he's um, a tremendous resource, wears a lot of different hats. Recovery coach, Recovery coach for, the, for the town. Um, Deb Hoffman, who uh, will be doing some fundraising for us, and Jack Richmond, who is the drug recognition expert for the town of Hingham. Does he do work in other towns as well? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I thought he did. I think he does, but I'm not all that positive. Okay. Um, and then um, when we were talking about structuring our, our filing, our nonprofit filing, we wanted to take into consideration the valuable resources that we have here in town. And so we created an advisory board um, that's comprised of Paul Gannon, a former selectman who is co-founder of Hingham Cares, Chief Glenn Olson, um, Superintendent of Schools Dorothy Gallo, who's down here at the end, um, our public health nurse Kathy Crowley, DARE officer Rob Ramsey, and SAD advisor officer Tom Ford. So we've got a lot of volunteers working on behalf of the town and prevention efforts. Um, and I think Hingham is very fortunate um, in that regard. So we are still looking for a secretary um, to take notes. I had a conversation with Officer Ford this morning about the possibility of having a student um, put in some community service hours um, and, and taking on that role. Um, we're also going to look into a student to manage our website and social media um, and also get community service hours for those efforts as well. We've got some really talented kids and some great programs at the high school. Did you want to speak to any of that? Um, no, just, um, yeah, there's plenty of kids looking for the community service hours and also to help, you know, pad the resume for you know, college, things like that. And we'll, we'll definitely find someone. Right. Fantastic. Okay. Laurie, we're ahead of schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so That's why you're the president. <laughs> <laughs> Keep things moving. Um, so we did file uh, to get our, our status as a nonprofit so that we could do some fundraising and to um, become a separate entity from the town. However, I spoke with Libby Claypool today, and she said that we're still waiting for a letter from the IRS, and I'm not entirely sure what the holdup is. Um, this has been going on for almost a year, actually, since we initiated the paperwork with the attorney who was filing on our behalf. So um, once we get that, and hopefully it's, it will be coming in short order, um, we can begin fundraising efforts. Um, I don't know if you wanted to speak to any of the fundraising efforts. Did you want to jump in and say um, anything about that? Yeah, I think the f really the fundraising, any anything that's raised by Hingham Cares or on behalf of Hingham Cares is going all to uh, bringing in guest speakers, um, uh, 
you know, doing um, events or whatever we have to pay for that to do a forum and our event uh, or provide a an educational seminar, whatever resources we need to access, that's what every single dime will go to. Um, and I think that as far as the fundraising goes, I think it's we're going to be primarily looking for entities in, in town, um, businesses in town that are um, you know interested in what in the work that we're doing and see the value in the information and education that we want to provide to the community so rather than holding a big event fundraiser type of thing I think we'll be going to different businesses and asking for a charitable do donation which they can write off on um, on their taxes to fund uh, a speaker um, a movie, an event, uh, all for education and awareness. So I think that's where the fundraising piece, that's what it's going to be for, um, those resources, those services. Mm -hmm. Great. We do have other free opportunities that we've taken advantage of, and we'll talk about some of those It's later on the agenda. But um, that's the wonderful thing about having so many resources here, especially in Plymouth County, is we work closely with other coalitions, um, Safe Harbor Cohasset, Hapsa of Hull, Situate Facts, Marshfield Facts, Duxbury Facts. We all collaborate. We have monthly meetings and um, share ideas and share resources. So there's a lot to tap into in addition to the district attorney and um, the Plymouth County Sheriff's Office and um, the Plymouth County Outreach Program and their monthly meetings. So lots of free, free services and free things that we can tap into as well. Um, while we're on the subject, Mary Ann Blackmer has agreed to undertake the task of doing some grant writing for us, and I didn't know if you would like to share a little bit about your background and sort of things that you, totally putting you on the spot, and I apologize. <laughs> uh, well, I've worked in nonprofits for probably over 20 years. Um, you know, it's changed, and we talked a little bit about this. It is great we're part of a coalition because a lot of the grant money, you know, we have a lot of resources here in Hingham. Um, but it's really difficult sometimes for other people outside of Hingham to want to give Hingham money because we talked about this. So we'll be, we, I've been thinking about this and I think we'll be uh, relying on the coalition a lot to maybe do um, when people are giving grants, they like the more bang for their buck type of thing. Um, but just off the top of my head, I was thinking, you know, Cultural Council, Hingham Education Foundation and the Sports Partnership. They give grants all the time for specific things like we're talking about. So, and I've worked, um, I've worked for the town. I actually have worked a lot of town committees, raising money, finding creative ways um, to do it. So that's my background. Fantastic. Excellent. And while we're on the topic of money, Pam, I'm putting you on the spot. We received our mailbox bill in the mail, and I don't believe we have enough money in our account <laughs> to pay for our mailbox bill. So we want to keep, we want to maintain that post office box and we'll figure something out. Oh, yeah. um, but um, do you have a sense of what our balance is at this point? I do. <laughs> do you really want to hear it? No. <laughs> but I, I think I want to drive yeah, home the fact. Funds, yeah. Yes. We've spent, um, right, all used well, but it's time to build it back up. Yes. Yep. We need to be replenishing our cash. Um, the, the coalition was started a couple of years ago by a grant, and mm -hmm. I think it was a, th was it a $3,000 grant or a $3,000 donation? That's Dr. Gallo. Do you remember yeah. Dr. Gallo? I don't remember the amount. Yeah. Okay. I think it was, um, I believe it was three. 3,000? Yep. We had a total okay. of, yeah, 3,000. Yeah. I think most of that was a grant, like yep. 2,500, and then there was a gift. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, so this That's will make it even more um, desirable for people who wish to contribute because they can write it off on their tax returns. I think also knowing that the co all the coalition members are volunteers, um, mm -hmm. you know, with full-time jobs, and uh, it's, you know, it's, it's the heart of it, really, that we're all here. Um, so truly, I think it is good for people to know that the funds go directly to the resources and yes. again like I said before um, to bring in a speaker to bring in uh, a movie an event um, you know is uh, if we have to pay for that it's that's 
that's why we need the fundraising. That's why we became a nonprofit. Exactly. So, and to your point too, don't forget people matching donations. Mm -hmm. yep. I was hoping you'd have that 501c3 before I left my job because they double my donation. My <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah, no, oh. we talked about that. So I was like, oh, if I give 100 bucks, you'll get, you know, 200, Two. so it'll be $300. Yeah. Free. But, so if you don't want to have it oh, before that's the too 28th, bad. if you get it before the 28th, let me know. Before right the here. 28th? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah. that's people, you, you know, that's something we should just talk to people because even if people say, well, I don't want to, I don't have a lot of money. It's if, even if you give 25 and the other people give 20 matching donations, people exactly. forget about that. Right. And that's a lot for us. I mean, yeah. that would be, right. what's an average speaker, Lori? Is there an average? It can be 2,500 to 10,000. Right. Yeah. So that's why um, we'll do a lot of coalition. And I think with Rob, I'll probably mm -hmm. reach out to you to find this diff definitely opportunities. And That's coalitions, like doing now. Right. Uh, statewide coalitions do get discounted on um, guest speakers. Yeah. So uh, that's, you know, that's good if it were, um, like, if it were just the sports partnership going for it. Um, because we're a prevention coalition, um, a lot of the speakers around this topic will give, uh, you that's know, great. Um, yeah. uh, substantial discounts. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Um, so the chief is not here with us, but I was hoping that, I know Dr. Gallo, you can't stay for the whole meeting. So is there, I'm curious to know how the ESPERT implementation went. The ESPERT, S-B-I-R-T, am I getting that oh, correct? Oh, the um, screening. The screening, yes. yes. Yeah, the, the verbal screening. Yes, uh, we did that last year for the first time and um, we mapped out a plan where we hired some substitute Excuse nurses. me for one sec. Would you mind um, moving a oh, microphone? Uh, some substitute her. nurses so that uh, we could use our own nurses to do the screening. Um, we were able to accomplish it with probably a little less in terms of the hiring of the sub-nurses than, than we thought it would be, so that's a good thing. They've mapped out a plan for this year so that they will do uh, the uh, high school students earlier in the year and and then the middle school students probably midway through the year it went very smoothly um, and um, we it, we anticipated actually because there is a parent opt-out provision that we might have a lot of parents who would opt out but in fact that didn't that didn't happen we had a fairly few students uh, parents who opted their students out and and the whole thing went much more smoothly than we thought. The nurses, our own nurses, the two at the high school and the two at the middle school were trained uh, appropriately. And from their perspective, things went really well. Good. So. And what grade levels is that done at again? Seven and nine. Seven and nine. Are the grade levels that, that we chose. We had some flexibility. We had to choose a middle grade, middle school grade and a high school grade. And uh, we thought ninth grade was the the best place to begin as you get um, students um, along in, uh, in, in years. There's so many other demands on their time and pulling them out of class is, is complicated. But I think they said it averaged something like six minutes, the actual survey. It's a limited number of questions. Parents are sent a letter. We have to send them a letter. The questions are included so they know what will be, uh, will be asked. And as I say, we had very few, uh, very few opt-outs. So we, the data gets reported electronically to the Department of Public Health, so no one else sees what's, uh, what the, res the responses are. I think parents were initially, some parents called us and were a little concerned because there is, um, there are very detailed guidelines as to how this will run and parents were concerned that they would not be notified um, if there were certain results that, um, that showed up uh, from their, their children. But I think uh, nurses were able to explain that and that nobody else would see the results. And, um, and so that allayed a lot, of the, a lot of the concern. So I think we're good to go for this year. I think we uh, actually took the amount of money that we would need to use for extra subs out of the budget for the current year because we don't think we we need it. We can manage with the regular nurses budget and um, all went well. Good. And what does that stand for for people that don't know? School, I don't think you refer to it as a debate. Intervention. 
intervention okay. is the eye. Uh, well, just in case people didn't, they have no idea. It's, an yes. it's a it's a required uh, screening mm -hmm. by the Department of Public Health. It's okay. part of a law, mm -hmm. part of the opioid uh, reduction law, and it had to be implemented by the end of the year last year. That's great. And we looked upon it as we do many mandates as, oh my gosh. <laughs> Mandated but, uh, yes. It was not as uh, obtuse. You, you, you saw the goings and comings because it was right tied out of your office. Yeah, for the, for the first year, we're Rob's office school. is near the nurse's office yeah. at the middle yeah. school. Yeah, it went pretty well for the first year. I mean, mm -hmm. a couple, I know they were going to tweak a few things, but overall, it went really well. And the kids seemed to be receptive to it, too, which I was, that was a big issue. I know, I know a few parents opt out, but I think most of the classes partook in it, which is a good thing. And they tried to work it out so that kids wouldn't be waiting in a line, you know, to have certain uh, people come. And those are some of the things they, they're going to tweak, just, uh, you know, how many kids do you want called out at any one time, and so to make it run smoothly. I think they also found that doing it in successive days was kind of burdensome and uh, didn't leave them with... Uh, um, time to check on those daily youngsters that they have to check on every day with, with different medical issues. So those are the kinds of tweaks. But. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Do we have any update from the D.A.R.E. program? Yeah, um, I see the uh, you know, school unit just started three weeks ago. So I see um, the D.A.R.E. class is at least half the sixth grade uh, this semester and then the other half. Um, after beginning of term three. So um, I've seen them once out of the four days, so I've seen um, some kids three times, other kids two. So I'm right in the middle of getting to know everybody. But, uh, but so far this year's been going well. Sixth grade seems like a good bunch of uh, young men and women. Uh, seventh and eighth grade is fantastic. We have a new health teacher at the middle school this year, Caroline Chula, if I pronounced that right. Um, Judy Wilson's retired after about 14 or 15 years with us. So um, Caroline, uh, she's very energetic. She's like a ball of energy. So uh, we have to sit down. Once things settle, just I have to uh, sit down with her and plan when I can come in to see the health, seventh and eighth grade classes. So on that, but it's going real well so far. You know, knock on wood. Hopefully, it stays that way. Very <clears> good. <throat> good. Good. Um, so Sad is next on the agenda. I don't know if you want to defer to Hannah or if you want Hannah to go first and then you can contribute well, can, afterward. Uh, Ladies before gentlemen. Well, she can take the form after that. We already, um, well, thank you for coming this morning and having a meeting sure. with us. And uh, a lot of good things ahead that Hannah can explain. And I just want to say she's doing an awesome job. First meeting the other day, big turnout. And uh, she ran a great meeting. And I think we're going to have a lot of, a lot of uh, eager support this year from uh, kids at the high schools. Good, good, good. So Hannah is the incoming SAD president. Yes. Um, so we had our first meeting um, on September 12th, and we had more than 25 people show up, which is a huge turnout compared to last year. Um, and basically, we just went over um, the basic expectations for what the club members will be um, expected to do this year, just as far as like you know, making responsibility, making responsible choices, and also like not posting anything on social media that could potentially um, be like in violation of the club or anything that we stand for. Um, but also I had the kids, we had everybody um, sign up for the SAD video project that we've been working on. Um, and that's basically going to be, um, we have 10 people, so we're gonna have everybody hold up signs um, with basic facts about drugs and alcohol and the dangers of that those substances and then we're going to make a video of it and hopefully we're going to be doing that with um the friday show every week or for like right before homecoming um and then also we have the weeding through the myths um project that we have going on on saturday and then we're also implementing in the high school um i don't know when that's going to be but mid-october yeah mid-october <laughs> um so all of us will have like a basic training, all the exec board members will have a basic training Saturday, um, and then we can hopefully better implement it in the high school. Um, so we have a ton of people signed up for that stuff too, which are mostly underclassmen, so that's also a really good thing, just because the upperclassmen can only do so much in, within this year. So we were trying to get as many young people as possible. 
And that's pretty much all we have going on for this month. Very Great. good. We that's talk a full month. Weeding Through the Mists is. <clears throat> um, so Weeding Through the Mists is a, I don't know if you call it a seminar. Display. Display. Kind of display setup, yeah. um, a display setup that basically is going to go through um, the different types of, like, drugs, I guess. So, like, weed and... Um, like juuling and vaping just because there's a lot of I know that I from what I've heard like most parents don't really know what that stuff is what the difference between vaping and juuling and all that stuff is so that's going to be a good way to get parents a little bit better educated on the subject even and as well as like young people who aren't really familiar with it yet I'm sure that it will probably come into their life hopefully not but um, if the more that they get older that I'm sure that it's going to be coming up and the more educated we can get young people the better off they will be hopefully very good and the video is in collaboration with the Plymouth I mean the um, South Shore Health Youth Connection oh, yeah. correct through South Shore Hospital yeah yeah South Shore Health Youth Connection yes is that what it's called yeah okay great yeah did you have a question? Thank you, Hannah. Oh, yeah. Just a question on the weeding through this. Is it something that's interactive? I mean, if a parent goes, is someone going to be manning the table so we all understand what we're looking at? And what ages might you think that's appropriate for? Very good questions. Thank you, Diane. Um, if you look under upcoming events, just so everyone has the dates for that, October 17th through 19th is when Weeding Through the Mist will be at the high school. On the 17th in the evening, we're doing a community walkthrough. So people can come. They're welcome to just come and, um, and take a look. And uh, students from SAD are going to be manning the display. You're getting trained shortly um, and will be manning the display to answer questions. And then um, the 18th and 19th, it will be available to students at the high school to come down during a study hall period or during lunch. And again, the students from SAD will be manning the display. So it's, it's, there are tables that are set up, and there are, um, there's you know, you know, information, like written information that's displayed, um, facts. Uh, there are, there's actual paraphernalia that will be on display. So... I think middle school kids would be yeah. I think totally so too. appropriate. Yep. And I think even, you know, sixth, uh, fifth, a fifth grader, I mean, it depends on every parent needs to, you know, knows the maturity level of their own kids. But um, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a visual thing that they can see and then learn. And I, I think that it's appropriate for. I think so too. I think I mean, if anything really to, young, I, but to identify. What's what was that? that? What time at the high school? Oh, do, I don't even know. We don't have a set time yet, but it will be in the okay, evening. Thank you. Sure. Um, so on that note, moving on to upcoming events, and we are way ahead of schedule. Look at the clock. She's looking at me. <laughs> was, was I concerned about you that? You wanted a half-hour meeting. I think you might get a half-hour <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Um, so upcoming events, September 22nd, as Hannah just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, Lynn Adams and students from SAD will be supporting the Youth Health Connections Weaving Through the Myths at the Hanover Mall. So that's been, that's set up during the month of September at the Hanover Mall. Um, so people in, in the community who can't make it on October 17th are welcome to go to the Hanover Mall and, and walk through. And you will be there from 1 to 3 on Saturday, is yes. that correct? It's open all day, but you're taking a little chunk of time. Is that correct? Yeah, so the other exec members and I have um, split up the time. So I'll probably be there from 1 to 3, and then the other girls will be stopping in just to make an appearance and kind of um, just show up, <laughs> um, just to, like, introduce themselves and really, like, get more involved. And this will be the first time that they've seen the display, correct? Yeah, it'll be the first time for me as well. Okay. So we'll hopefully, we'll probably get there early to all get trained, and then um, we'll be being able to, like, do it better in the, at the high school. Sorry. Good. Answer all those tough questions. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and then we've already discussed October 17th through 19th. We, uh, at the meeting that we had this morning with Tom and Hannah, we talked about bringing the film, if they had known, back to show to the freshman class during a freshman, what is it called? Not freshman uh, seminar. Freshman seminar. They meet 
It is freshman month. seminar. And um, in speaking with uh, Principal Swanson um, briefly, he seemed, um, you know, very interested in adding that to like the, the yearly curriculum. Like yeah. that could be the one month, that could be the, the topic. He will have to work with the freshman advisory board just to make sure that um, it falls into place and doesn't overlap with other, other months and other topics. But um, he definitely wants to make it happen in March or April. Mm -hmm. and we'll have a good hour for it. And um, Hannah had a great idea, showing the video first, and then having the students go back to their advisory groups, and they can actually talk amongst themselves and with their, um, their teacher advisors to kind of like debrief about it. Process group. Yeah, so exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, just so they're just not walking out with questions. Right. And yeah, that's really good. Idea. I had some anecdotal comments presented to me that, I mean, the film is very impactful, very powerful, um, but there were some students that, after watching it last spring, had a tough time just going back to their regular schedule after seeing something that was so, you know, emotionally, yeah, Im impactful. So, um, yeah, so we talked about doing that in the context of the freshman seminar so that they would have that, you know, introductory time, then watch the film, and then they'll go back, go back yeah. and decompress. What did you call that? A, what a process group. group. <laughs> a process group? Is that the official name? We can call it a without process a group. Without a counselor there, yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, it's good. A process group. <laughs> well, and we also talked about having the guidance counselors available so that yeah, they, if they're always had a lend oh, so to that. that's a real process group. Yeah. They, they always lend a hand yeah, to that's really good. subjects like that, so. Yeah. And also, this is, gives us enough time to get members of the Soper family to come back, because I think that's the best way to do it. And I mean, that really makes the story, right. um, you know, just more impactful when they're there telling it themselves. Mm -hmm. so. And Ali Soper was just tremendous for anyone who had a chance to see her. Oh, I don't think anyone did. That's right, because she spoke to the students. Um, I mean, she, huge. you saw her. Yes, she like totally changed the entire um, perception of the video just because um, like a lot of students we've seen videos about impactful stories of drug and alcohol abuse but ha seeing somebody firsthand that's so relatable and so close to our age group like that was nothing that we've ever experienced before it totally brought us closer to somebody like it felt like we were talking to a friend that's how she she was so personable and so easy to ask questions to there were so many questions afterward and it felt like after when we did go back to class I think it would be a good idea just to have that little group to talk about it just because we went back to class and that's all we wanted to talk about like mm -hmm. we just wanted to talk about how we felt about it and how that totally changed everything that we like thought we knew about drugs and how our decision making skills can impact our lives mm -hmm. that's a really powerful statement wow we could end on that I know, my goodness. Fantastic. Anna, they may want to use that as a quote. <laughs> I'm serious, in the marketing of the film. That was really great, really great. You captured it perfectly. Um, okay, so you're up, Lori, okay. talking about the possibility of a guest speaker and the health class curriculum that you're involved with. Mm -hmm. I think that um, we're looking at the spring bringing in uh, Chris Heron again. Um, he was here a few years ago, maybe four or five four years five ago. Um, and uh, and he's, his story has evolved um, to not only, it's not only encompasses his, his story and his drug and alcohol use and the decisions that he made, but also it, it really um, has evolved into things around bullying and um, letting people be who they are and, um, you know, really uh, asking the question, why, why, why do you feel the need to, to use a substance? Why do you feel the need to change yourself? So his story has really evolved, and um, so I think we're looking at bringing him in. That would require fund, definitely fundraising. Um, so, uh, and then there's other, there's other speakers out there that, that we're going to, we're going to also approach um, on the on the same topic to bring in. So that's a possibility. Uh, we, we had talked to at one point, not to interrupt, but we had talked to at one point about having Kurt Gerald share his story. Yeah, yeah. Those are really, yeah. It's yeah. So we there are meaning. Yeah, there's a, there's opportunities for sure. Um, and then uh, on the same lines of people sharing their stories. So uh, Hingham High School um, has ten. 
um, 10 days of in health class, 10th grade health class of, of addiction curriculum, which is, inc which is absolutely amazing. And Karen Beatty is the health teacher along with Erica, I think it's Swire. She's uh, fairly new to the school. Um, what is it? Shinny. Shinny, okay. Um, and uh, they do such an amazing job with this curriculum. Um, it's so thought out and they do everything from uh, uh, showing meditation videos and how to, how to calm yourself and how to de-stress and so that you're not self-medicating. Um, everything from that to they show, I know they show the Chris Heron ESPN uh, 30 for 30 video and then uh, they allow me to come in and, and ask the kids and ask the classes. I, I go for the whole day. Um, any questions that they have around any, any topic with substance use, um, any question about any drug, any question about how to help a family member, any question about what treatment looks like, any question about intervention, uh, any you know anything recovery what is what is it all and so they they do this these anonymous um, you know papers and they throw them in a basket and then I get to pull one out and and I answer all these questions and the kids I, I was there uh, both semesters and um, they ask amazing questions uh, they're very respectful and then we added another day in the spring um, the Heron Wellness Center that. I'm the director of now, we thought, wouldn't it be great if we brought up some speakers to the high school of the residents that are in our program? And so speaking to what Hannah said, we brought up, uh, we had four residents at the time that one was 18 years old, uh, 18 to 24, um, and they all had different stories. One was an 18-year-old a uh, boy with a baseball scholarship to college who every time he drinks alcohol he ends up in the hospital he has like a severe you know you can call it an allergic reaction but he kept tr you know trying to fit in and and um, it ended up costing him a scholarship he ended up getting kicked out of school he had fights in the dorm so this 18 year old kid is there as a sober kid now um, in a program for three months telling his story to the 10th graders. And they did every single class, uh, another a 20 year old who was a football high school captain and went to college and had a lot of competition and he didn't really handle it well. So he ended up using uh, marijuana more and then drinking more and then ended up with prescription pills and then ended up with a heroin addiction and overdosed and he he went to treatment and then and then came into our program. So all of these four different stories of these young adults in towns that grew up similar to Hingham that took these wrong paths and they were able to tell their story and um, and the the tenth graders were they asked questions. They um, my my son is in tenth grade and he was in one of the classes and his friends over the summer would ask me how's Tom doing how's Zach doing you know how's so and so doing so it was um, and we we sent out a survey after about what they liked about it and did they have any questions would they change anything and you know they 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 really embraced it and liked it so you know there's a there's education in in that as part of the curriculum and. Heron Wellness, we're going to do that uh, twice a year in each semester and bring up these, these young people that are in our program now. We have people in our program that are there five or six for marijuana addiction. Like that's a real thing and it's, it's something that uh, with the legalization of marijuana that everybody needs to know. Um, it's, it is a true real thing and um, so we'll bring up somebody that, um, that struggled with that and bring, bring them to the school. So the health class addiction curriculum, like it's like my favorite thing in the entire world. <laughs> I love Aww. it and I thank Dr. Gal, I, it's amazing. And a lot of towns do not do that. I'm gonna tell you that I have so, I have a lot of people that say, I wish I had that in my town. You know, some of our staff members down there say, really, I wish, I, I wish we did that in our town. So that's my favorite thing. Um, and then the, uh, the other thing that we want to throw out as um, for people that are at home to know and to take advantage of is um, 
that if anybody out there is struggling or you have a question about a concern that you don't know whether to ring the bell or, you know, is it a problem, is it not a problem, um, you can email HinghamCaresBoard at gmail.com and, um, and we'll answer that for you. We'll, we'll offer resources, direction, guidance um, through our, um, you know, our experience and our professional um, licensing that we can make those suggestions and make those recommendations that it's part of what we do for the town. It's a free service for the town from Hingham Cares um, that that is available because a lot of people don't really don't know. Um, and so uh, we, we want that to be um, a service. I think it's important and, and we hope people take advantage of it. So that's all I got. Fantastic. Thank you. Can I just ask um, a Lori a question? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure um, since we haven't met in a while, but in the spring there was a lot of talk about um, one of these walk-in centers that some of the towns offer yep. and pursuing that or joining with another group and pursuing it. So do we have any kind of update on that or is that still something that's in the Situate works? Has one, don't they? Situate has one, but I think it is fairly easy to plan. It's having Kurt, who is a certified recovery coach, and myself, um, there's other addiction professionals in the area that we pick a day or an evening, mm -hmm. and it is literally like a confident, it, it's a drop-in center, and you can ask any, any question that pertains to substances and have somebody there, you know, it's a, instead of emailing, you, mm -hmm. you can just come in. And we could share it with Cohasset. Um, I know it's something we talked about. We never, we never did. I think you know we should definitely do it. Mm -hmm. It's I don't. It's not that hard to put together. Well, I'm always thinking of that college age group, the mm -hmm. 18 to you know 25 or so, and many of them are in school, but many aren't. And right. A lot of that has to do with what we're talking about. Right. Right. That they aren't in school, but what kinds of things that we have kind of a captive audience in the right. students, but but uh, there are people in the community, particularly those younger. Folks yeah. that really don't have a place to yep. to go. Yeah. I know Kurt would love to do it. I don't know. Does Kurt do something like that in Hull? I know he does quite a bit in Hull with the anchor. There is a drop in. They do have a anchor does have a drop in. And what about the church, uh, North Street Church? A drop in? Yeah. Uh, maybe. We can we I don't can follow know. up on that. That's yeah. a great question. Listen, yes. There's something on Wednesday nights at um, North Street. Chapel across from the old Tedeschi's. Yes. I think at 7 is open to anyone. It's 12 step family. I guess 20 people showed up last Wednesday. So oh, that's wow. fantastic. So, okay. Um, every Wednesday, I believe, from 7 on for families. Okay. Is every it like Wednesday. a Learn to Cope or is it? No, it's their own group, I think. Beautiful. So just cast it out because it that's would be a month before it. The next meeting. So that's okay. Really good. Yeah. All right. Great. Carol, Thank could you. you say again where where it is? I believe it's the. I mean, it is the North Street Community Chapel Nazarene Church. Um, across Carol, the I'm West West Hingham. Oh, yeah. West Hingham. Oh, sure. North Street, right? Yes. Do you want Do you want that on? Um, would you mind stepping up to the mic and just repeating what you said? No. <laughs> would Diane do it? <laughs> Go ahead. So it's uh, so it's every Wednesday night at North Street Community Church um, at seven o'clock. It's a it's a step program for families. Is that a twelve step program for families? I believe so. Oh, cool. That's what I was told. Okay, great. So it's like an Allen or something. Excellent. We could share that on our we can share media that page yep. too if we get a little flyer about it. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so we touched on fundraising. Anything additional? Any questions from that? And if you have a question, I, I forgot to mention, if you wouldn't mind coming up to the mic. It's okay. You can just stand there. Diane, you look lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I wasn't following everything that closely enough. Hi, Diane DiNapoli, 16 Gardner Street. I don't know if I have to do that, but <laughs> I feel yeah, it's just in my blood <laughs> now. I had a question if anyone knew anything on following up Mary Ellen Devers' piece on the CBD products that are being sold in town. Um, I did speak to the contact, um, Jane, who was very helpful. She I answered some of my questions that an ID will not be required since it's not 
under the medical marijuana. There's um, no THC in it. Right. Correct. Well, a trace. There is a trace. Um, I was just a little surprised by it. I didn't know much about it. I did ask if she could come and clarify some questions, and she said she would. But I didn't know who governs this or how is this permitted exactly. So if anyone knows anything, I would I just know curious. There's a, I, mean, I think any health food probably store. To it, any, any health yeah, food store. store. I would say we have the Board of Health, I would think. Well, the, but the people that are going to be the proprietors are long time, it's Hingham Center Pharmacy, correct? Um, My understanding is that you can't be selling medical marijuana products outside of the overlay district. Am I incorrect in that? She, she said it wasn't That's not it's medical not. Medical yeah. Yeah. There's no it's THC not in it. Yeah, there's yeah. no there THC. Yeah, they sell it on Groupon. She said there's a trace. In any of these things, there's a trace. And so my question was, are there any IDs there are no IDs required. So my concern was the 17-year-old came in and said, I'm suffering from anxiety, depression. This may be sold to them. Um, it's behind the counter at Hingham. It's not in situate. So again, a lot of questions about it. I certainly know this is kind of an evolving industry. I just saw today Coca-Cola is actually researching how to put infuse some of their products with this. So I, I think it just may be something to learn. Personally, I don't know a lot about it, but I think I probably should because it seems to be something that's creeping into the general food. Well, if it's a, so if it's a medical product, it's not. then people need to have a card right. to purchase it, and it needs to be in the overlay district, sold in the right. overlay district. If it's not a medical product, then it's a retail product, and I don't believe they have a retail license. I'm not positive about that, but I've heard that there are no retail licenses in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. No, no, no. Just no yet. it doesn't require it doesn't require a retail it's license. It, but I think the question is no, I think it, it that does, if it there's does still if it's a marijuana product it does no, still. No, it's not a marijuana product. It doesn't have to They they're, they're not saying it's a marijuana. Mar it, it's almost like um, mouthwash is an alcohol yeah, product. Right, exactly. Or vanilla right. isn't considered alcohol, but vanilla you could drink vanilla and get so my question Don't again anyone was, do that if we're, no. we're a tad, you know, learning about this, I did worry that some children may assume this is a marijuana product and I can use this for recreational purposes. And I, I just didn't feel there was any specific thing stopping that since there was no ID required. And, you know, saying, oh, well, it's expensive, which I suppose a small amount of oil is $100, she said, which could be expensive. Hundred dollars, kids will find it if they want it. And I said they eat Tide Pods. They're not. This is not. Yeah, <laughs> no disrespect to you, but no. we have to learn a little more about it. Is my my question. I, I really feel some sort of ID would be great. With if that. this is in situate, then I bet the Situate Facts Coalition. It's Hingham, Hingham Pharmacy. Hingham. It's no, situate it's, and Hingham. It's, it's situate already and sold. Hingham. Yeah. So we can, we can look into I suppose it. We can I just totally buy it yeah, and see what yeah, it's like. You know, yeah. But it just was again. Don't know much about it. Just know I was very surprised to see that the paper. Mm. So and like what Pam just said, I think we all need to educate ourselves on yeah. it. My understanding is I was saying it's sold on Groupon. It's not mind altering. It's not there's, mind there's no. It's not Correct. a controlled substance. But it is used so, for pain. So well, like I, I yeah, but so is um, so is like uh, you know Ben Gay. Right. Do you know what I mean? But this is, but this is a marijuana product. It is. There is a point oh one percent trace product. element, which is only. Right. It's not a marijuana product. It's a it's a cannabis product, okay. and the cannabis industry is what's being regulated right now in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So. Yeah. I, again, a lot of questions about it. So yeah. We need to yeah. Yeah. But clearly yeah. So, it's not a so yeah. we will find out. And um, thank you. It's so very. That's but, the it's a, but it's a regulated yeah. substance. So that's the. That's the part that I'm not entirely sure of. Because you can purchase, I mean, okay. you can purchase Who's on this? oils <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it's like the um, yeah, topical. It's like Bengal. A lot of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I think. Um, I, think so too. I, I will say the woman said it was tested at the Pro Verde lab in Milford. Um, and she, again, spoke very highly of the product, was very um, anxious to come and speak and educate people on it. So Let's get her. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just feel Yeah, like that, I, that might be really good for, yeah. for us to host, um, to, you know, uh, help parents understand if yes, there needs the to difference. be concern right. um, getting into, like, a younger person's hands. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Diane for bringing that to everyone's attention. Something that we can follow up on. I'm sure you'll be following up on it as well. Can we She's assign, assign you that task? 
Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> you can be our <laughs> investigative reporter. <laughs> Anything else? I had just had a comment about uh, the fundraising. As we were talking about the fundraising, you know, it's mm -hmm. hard even for people who have good intentions just to get the check to come in and all of that. We had some success, and I won't mention the particular um, project that we had, but it was a number of years ago, and we had a project, and we had a lot of big donors, but we really weren't getting in very far with some of the smaller donors until we came upon this thought about we will let people actually buy things or pieces of things as a way of donating. So as we're looking at uh, some of the speakers that may be costly because speaking is their profession mm -hmm. uh, and, and the goal might be, you know, $1,500 to get Chris Heron or whatever, you know, to, to put out a, a feeler using some social media, we need X people to donate $30 mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. So the people see that they're buying something or contributing mm -hmm. to something concrete rather than just dollars. I agree. Right. And like now that would take yes, some yeah. planning in advance, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, for some of the things that we want to do that are more costly yeah. than others. And it gives more people uh, an opportunity to get involved, first of all. Right. Because no matter how little you may donate, that's a, a, a oh, that's signal that mm -hmm. you're interested in this topic and can become part of our mm -hmm. our effort longer term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think we should give consideration to that kind of fundraising for certain yeah. things. Yeah, so that's, right. that's a great idea, yeah. yeah. I use that all the time, that's a good one. Because mm -hmm. then people, Imagine you know, if everybody gave a there's dollar. Buy, there's more buy everybody in that way. Everybody in town yeah. gave a dollar. Yeah. It was like do you know how many times I've I mean, said that, Lori, with all my fundraising? Really? Please, if everybody just gave a we should dollar. Do it. We should just throw it on the Facebook Please. page and see what yeah. happens. Yeah. Everybody, everybody. But it would be good to have a, a particular goal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a hat. Well, a they buy five minutes of Chris Heron or ten minutes. Like, you know, if they can. Yeah, this is do how much. one minute of or, or anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, we got to get creative. Mm hmm Yeah. I think we need to pay for our mailbox first. Yeah. That's amazing. How much is that? What is the bill for I the mailbox? Donate that. What is it, 120? Yeah, I think, we I think we'll it's 120. We'll donate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we'll we donate can, the we can cover the, it. The mailbox. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, donate. now you feel like I'll you've donate donated the mailbox. Yeah. 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 David is David Send watching. Send me the invoice. Yeah. <laughs> OK. So you adjourn this, or how do you, I, how do you yeah. want to end this? Yeah, I think we're all set. Thank you all so much for coming and for being a part of this. Thank you to Harbor Media for being here this evening. For those of you who came um, and, and participated in the audience, and thank you to those who um, are watching at home once this is posted online. Have Thanks, a good everybody. Night. Thank you. Have a good night. night.